All right. This is the second free response question that you guys have in Gradebook. It's from 326. And the question states, certain human genetic conditions such as sickle cell anemia result from a single base pair mutation in DNA. All right. So this was, although it looked like a very um, simple question, this is actually a four-point question. Tricky word here at the very beginning of the prompt. It says explain. Explain means you need to give an explanation. Uh, statements of fact aren't going to cut it for this one. So explain how a single base pair mutant in DNA um, can alter the structure and in some cases the function of a protein. So first thing you guys wanna think about when you see DNA and protein in a question that you wanna make sure that you're covering everything in between, how DNA uh, instructions can be portrayed in a protein. So the first thing that should be coming to your heads when you see something like this, especially with a mutation tied in, is transcription and translation, AKA central dogma, right? Okay, so the first way you could have earned a point on this one was for simply defining what a mutation is. So a mutation being a change in the nitrogen base on a piece of DNA um, from an A to a C, G, or T, or somewhere in between. So let's take a look real quick at another. Thank you. So let's look at a student response. So down here at the bottom, the one that's highlighted in yellow, you guys could see this person stated there could be a mutation that could change and of the bases C, G, A, or T. And I think what they meant to say there was one. Um, the only problem I have with this sentence, although I gave it a point anyway, is that DNA is not mentioned. Okay, so mutation, you want to let your reader know that you know that a mutation happens in the DNA although it's uh, stated in the question. All right, next part of a way you could have earned points on this one would be through your knowledge of central dogma. Okay, so you could go into details and a lot of kids went into a lot of details about different types of mutations. And this word says describe. You can't just state uh, what's here. So describe means you have to tell me what these mean. And you could have basically picked any of them. So you could have went in detail about a duplication, a frame shift, a nonsense, a deletion, a substitution, or point mutation. Any one of those, a description of it and how it affects the DNA would have earned you your point. So let's go back to the paper. All right, so looking at this last response here, there could have also been a frame shift, deletion, insertion within the amino acid sequence. A couple things wrong here. They just stated, instead of describing the mutations, which are listed in the scoring guidelines, so they could have picked any one of these and did a description. And the, um, these things aren't happening in the amino acid sequence, they're happening in the DNA. Okay, so there's, uh, an error there. So let's go up to this response that's right before it. Okay, so this is another response. A single base pair mutation changes one of the nucleotides, either A, C, G, or T. Excellent. Okay. Um, they said nucleotides, although I would have loved to have seen the word DNA there, but that point was given there for that first sentence. There are also five different types of mutations, frame shift, substitution, nonsense, deletion, and duplication. Um, not a point. Why? Because they just restated the scoring guideline again. So they, you should be picking one of those when you do your correction and describing what it is. Okay. So let's page back up a little bit further to this person's response. A single base pair mutant in DNA, awesome. We got that DNA word there. As a change in DNA's nitrogen base pair leads to a mutation in the DNA becoming, because according to the central dogmas, proteins are coded from codons of RNA and RNA is synthesized through a DNA template strand, which takes each nitrogen base and codes for its complementary. So they got a central dogma point there, going DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. Okay. Um, when substitutions, deletions, or additions of nitrogen bases are made, it can lead to synthesis of different amino acid segments. Okay, so again, this one, not describing the, um, the substitution deletion um, of a nitrogen basis specifically in the, in the DNA sequence is going to 
lead to a point very closely because they almost got there. They almost said that that's inserting something into that DNA sequence or deleting it. Okay, so the amino acids that are altered to make up the given protein can lead to different function or structure or function. That's repeating the question, such as the case of sickle cell anemia. In sickle cell anemia, there is a substitution in the DNA template strand that leads to the coding of an incorrect amino acid. Okay, that's getting to our protein structure. Okay, so this can lead to a deformed red blood cell that cannot take oxygen. So the binding of oxygen is restricted. What I would have loved to have seen there would be denatured. Um, the active site, we want to mention the act, if the protein's denatured, the active site cannot hold on to that oxygen. So our protein um, being able to be carried would be affected. Now let's look down here at this second one. Um, a single base pair mutation changes one of the nucleotides, okay? Again, we want to see DNA. There are five different types of mutations, and they just basically stated the scoring guidelines. There's no description there, so no point earned. The structures can be altered to primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary. Again, a restatement of the scoring guideline. They didn't describe what primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary are, so no description point there. Um, a change in the base pair can change the amino acid coded for will in turn change the protein function to a different protein being produced, or it could stop the whole process with the stop code on. Okay, that's going back to a type of, of mutation. Um, you need to talk about either describing primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and how that would be affected with the folding, or um, an active site that's no longer going to be binding oxygen. So for protein not being able to function, you can't just state the, the parts of the protein, you have to just, you have to go into why it's not working. Okay, so why is that, um, why is that improper folding making it so the protein cannot fold? So when we're describing the central dogma, you need to talk about how DNA is converted to RNA, RNA is converted to protein, and the specifics of it. Not just the flow of DNA to RNA to protein, you have to talk about the steps. Then all those last two bullets are only um, given, the last two of the first DNA point right here, are only given if you have a good description of transcription and translation. So go back to those notes, DNA to RNA, RNA to protein, and talk about what, what and where it's happening. All right, and then this protein point, um, you, it tells you here, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, but within your response, you need to describe what those structures are in the protein to earn that point. This uh, second bullet is honestly the one I would have gone for in, in writing, um, talking about how if the protein becomes denatured, that awesome word, where if protein's not made properly, it becomes denatured, um, and the active site is no longer a fit for a substrate, right? And then the oxygen cannot bind. Okay, our group interaction you could have gone into, but that seems like it was a little bit of a stretch. All right, when you go to do your corrections, please refer to this scoring guideline and these describe words when you submit it. Okay, all right. Catch you guys later on the next one.